Alright then gang, so in the last video we saw how to add data into our Firestore database over here, then retrieve that data and show it right here in our application. And we did that via this method. We said db.collection, then guides, then .get. We received a snapshot back and then we used this setup guides method right here to output the HTML. Okay, now this is going to be showing for everyone regardless of whether we're logged in or if we log out we're still going to see it, but we don't want that to happen. If we log out, we want to hide these. If we log in, we want these to be visible. Okay, so how do we combat this? Well, we're going to do this in a combination of two ways. First of all, we're going to update the UI dependent on what data we get back when a user either logs in or logs out because we're listening for that change right here, right? So we're going to update the UI dependent on that. And if we are logged in, then we're going to show these. If we're not logged in, then we're not going to show these. Secondly, to make our application more secure, we're going to lock down our Firestore data with security rules. So we'll take a look at that second. So first of all, let us approach the UI. So right here, when we say on auth state changed, if they're logged in, then we're just logging this to the console. If they're logged out, then we're logging this to the console. Now, it makes sense only to retrieve data if they're logged in, because if they're not logged in, then we don't want to show them data. So let's instead copy this, or rather cut this, and get rid of the title at the top as well, and we'll paste it right here. So instead of just logging to the console, the user, now we're going to go out and grab the documents, the guides, and we're going to set up the guides with this method. We're going to pass it into that, okay? Now, if they're not logged in, then what we're going to do is call setup guides again. But this time, what we're going to do is just pass in an empty array as the data because we don't actually want to output anything. So when they're logged in, we're going to call that with the actual data. When they log in, we're going to call it again to update the UI again. And we're going to call it with this empty array so that when we cycle through that array, nothing's going to be there. And it's going to essentially remove these things. So let's save that and see if this works so far. So if I save it and go to the browser, you're going to see I now see nothing. Now, because I'm not logged in, and even if I refresh, I'm still not logged in, I don't see anything. That's because we're calling it with an empty array, right? We're not passing any data in. And then when we're updating the HTML, it's going to be basically an empty string because we're not cycling through any data and creating any code. Now that when we log in, I'm just going to log in as Mario at the netninja.co.uk and test one, two, three, four. When we log in, we should see those things right here. Awesome. So that's good. And that's because this function right here fired because there was a state change in the user authentication. We got the documents and then we called the setup guides method with those documents. So when we cycle through those and create the HTML, we update the HTML right there. Again, when we log out, we should lose those. Perfect. So this is pretty good. However, what I'd like to do is instead of just showing nothing, show when they're logged out a message which says something like log in to see guides or something like that. So let's go to where we actually render this HTML because instead of rendering nothing here, if there's no guides, then I want to render that little text snippet, log in to view guides. So what we need to do is a little check right here. We need to make sure that we actually have some length on the data. If we do have length to the data, it means that we've called it from here because we're passing in that data array. If we don't have length on the data, it means we called it from here and they're logged out. So if we do have length, we're going to show those guides. If we don't have length, we'll show something else. All right. So if and then data dot length. So if we have length, then we're going to output this stuff right here. Sweet. Done. Now then, else, if we don't have any length, what we're going to do is take the guide list and then set the inner HTML and we'll set that equal to a string and it's going to be an H5. So H5, not in caps, like so. And then we'll just say something like login to view guides, close that H5 off. And in fact, I'm just going to give this a class, a center align to align the text to the center. So class equals center align like so. OK, so now if we're logged out and we call it from here, we should see that message because there's no length to the data. 
and if we're logged in and we call the method from here then we should get the actual docs instead of that message because we have length okay so we save all that we go over here and now it says log in to view guides because we're not currently logged in if we log in mario at the net ninja dot co dot uk and test one two three four when we log in we should see those guides awesome okay so that's the first step we've updated the ui now dependent on their authentication state and we either show them or hide them now this is not terribly secure anyone with a bit of know-how when it comes to front-end development or firebase is still going to be able to access your data under the hood if they want to the ui might be uh different but what they can do is actually make requests in the background with our config, our API key, because we've not locked our data on the server, okay? So this right here, this is just to handle the UI. We're not really protecting our data, and that's important. When we want to restrict our data to only authenticated users, we actually also have to restrict that data on the Firestore database itself, on the server. And we do that using security rules. So let's head to our console. This is our Firestore database. And notice right here, we have rules, a little exclamation mark next to it. And that exclamation mark is because we're still in test mode. And it even says that right here, your security rules are defined as public. So anyone can steal, modify, or delete data in your database, right? So these are the rules currently, and they're very weak. So what we're seeing here is, look, this is the cloud Firestore service, then we're getting any of the documents inside the database. We're matching any one of these documents and we're allowing anyone to read or write to these documents, okay? Now we don't want that. We want to restrict this access. So what I'm gonna do is actually comment this out for now, this bit right here, because we don't want to match all documents anymore. Instead, what we want to do is match documents in the guides, collection so we're making this rule specifically for our guides collection okay so we're going to restrict access on that so the way we do that is by first of all match and by the way i've put forward slashes right here to comment this out just like javascript so we're going to match now forward slash guides because that's the collection name that we're restricting right here then forward slash then in curly braces we're going to say guide ID. So this refers to the specific individual guide and they all have unique IDs, remember, auto-generated. Okay, so no matter what guide they go to, it's going to be referenced by the guide ID right there. So when a user tries to get one of these guides or get all of the guides, then we want to make some kind of authentication rules so that only people who are authenticated can actually read and write to this collection. Okay, so the way we do that is by saying allow read comma and write so we're allowing read and write access now if we just ended that there with the semicolon this is basically saying look anyone can come along to this guides collection and see a unique guide id and write to a unique guide id so anyone can come along and read and write the data inside that collection essentially now we don't want that what we want to do is restrict it so we can add a condition to this and the way we do that is by adding a colon like so, and then writing the condition. Now our condition is gonna be, they can read and write to these guides if the request object dot auth dot UID is not equal to null. So like I said before at the start of this series, whenever we make any kind of request to a Firebase service, then this authentication thing comes along for the ride. And this is the request object. The authentication is on that object that request object and we can see the uid of the currently logged in person now if they're logged in then this property right here this is going to be equal to some kind of unique string remember let me just open this up authentication in another tab over here when we created a new user they're given this uid right so if that exists if a user is logged in and we make a request to get some data over here then that uid is not going to be equal to null and so therefore it satisfies this condition and we're allowed to read and write because we're logged in. If we're not logged in, then this UID right here, it's going to be null. So therefore this is going to fail because it is equal to null, right? And therefore we won't be allowed read or write access. So this now, my friends, is making our Firestore data secure. 
so that not just anyone can come along and read and write to the database. Now, only authenticated users can read and write to this collection. Does that make sense? Good. So there was two steps there. A, we updated the UI over here to show and hide records. And B, we locked our data using those security rules right here. Now, if you want to learn more about security rules, I'm going to give you a link down below that explains them in great depth, probably a lot better than I've explained them right here. So feel free to check out that link as well. But now, my friends, we have restricted our data, our guides, so that only people logged in can now access them. In the next video, I'd like to do something a bit similar, but this time I want to hide and show different links inside the navbar dependent on their authentication status again.